Welcome to our lecture online. Now here's our next problem from the JE Advanced Test from 2021. And again, it's quite a challenging pro problem. It deals with Snell's law in total internal reflection. A wide slab consists of two media of refractive indices, N1 and N2, and they were nice enough to give us a little diagram there. And uh, they're placed in air as shown in the figure. So above that we have air. A ray of light is incident from medium N1 to N2 at an angle of theta, where sine theta is slightly larger than 1 over N1. Take refractive index of air as 1. Which of the following statement or statements is or are correct? It could be anywhere from 1 to 4, these statements being correct. So notice that we have an incident ray from N1 to N2 at an angle of theta. They do tell us that sine of theta is larger than 1 over N1. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, let's think about total internal reflection. So we have N1 sine of theta 1 equals N2 sine of theta 2. Now, think of it as general, so not related to that problem right there. But in general, so we have going from medium 1 to medium 2, we have this. And let's say that this one is air, just to make it simple. Then we have N1 sine of theta 1 is equal to 1 for the refractive index times the sine of 90 degrees to have total internal reflection, meaning it's not going to go into the air, it's going to reflect back into the medium. So since this is 1, we have N1 sine of theta 1 equals 1, or sine of theta 1 equals 1 over N1. So if this is larger than that, then we know we have total internal reflection. That's what that means. So essentially, they don't say it outright, but realizing that sine of theta is larger than 1 over n, that means we're going to have total internal reflection if you have a medium being uh, bounded by air. So, now they say the light ray enters air if n1 equals to n2, or n2 equals to n1. So what they're saying here is that these two refractive indices are the same, which means that the light would simply go in the same direction. There would not be any bending in any direction. And then we would be incident on air where we have the condition where this is larger than that, so there would be internal reflection. So the light ray enters air, no, that's not the case because it's going to have total internal reflection, so we know that A is not correct. All right, how about B? The light ray is finally reflected back into the medium of refractive index 1, N1, if N2 is smaller than N1. So let's have a condition now, like this, where N2 is smaller than N1. So if it's smaller, hmm, what happens? If it's larger, it bends towards the normal. If it's smaller, it bends away from the normal. So here we have the, the light coming in at an angle theta. This is N1. And so if N1 is, if N2 is smaller, then the light would go like this. And then the light would hit this. And so what we would have is the same condition we have over here. If N1 is bounded to air, there would be total internal reflection. If then it, it, it refracts away from the normal, because now we enter an index of refraction which is smaller, and that one is bounded to air, we would also have total internal reflection. However, so I would say that uh, this is correct under these circumstances. However, so I would say yes, we're good. But what if N1 or N2 is so small that it's the same as air? Then you'd have total internal reflection this way. And you would say, well, the light ray is finally reflected back into the medium. Well, that would be the case anyway. So in either situation, that would be correct. So we're good. All right, B is correct. How about C? The light ray is finally reflected back into the medium of refractive index if N1 of N1 if N2 is greater than N1. Well, if it's greater, then we'd have a situation like this, where the, the light ray comes like this at an angle theta, and then it would bend towards the normal, because now we have an index of refraction which is greater, so this is N1, this is N2, and N2 is greater than N1. What would happen over here? Well, even though the angle is now smaller, 
the index of refraction into is larger, so therefore the bending would be so great that you'd still have complete total internal reflection. So it doesn't matter if n1, if n2 is the same as n1, if it's smaller than n1, if it's bigger than n1, in all cases the light would simply be totally internally reflected, so that means that C is correct as well. Finally, they ask us, the light rays reflected back into the medium of refractive index, and one if n2 is equal to 1, well, if you make n2 as if it's air, and let me go back over here, as if it's air, because if you let the index of refraction be the same as air, then you'd have total internal reflection, and yes, that would be correct there as well. So you can see that in this case, I would say answer B, C, and D are all correct, and answer A is the only one that is not correct. And it all has to do with total internal reflection. It doesn't matter if there's going to be total internal reflection from N1 to air, because the angle here is too large, because we said that the sine of theta is larger than 1 over N, then it doesn't matter what other medium you place in between the air and N1, you will always have internal reflection if N2 is larger, equal to, or smaller than N1. And that's kind of an interesting thing to know, but that's what this problem uh, reflects. And so that is how it's done using Snell's law and total internal reflection. And how long did that take? Six minutes. A little over six. Not bad, considering I did a lot of talking. So that's about the way you want to look at it.